Those that are crazy enough to think that they can change the world are the ones that do. It only takes one person to make positive change. I was born in India, soon to be the most populated country in the world, with 1.3 billion people. It is a magnificent country, full of rich culture and heritage. It is also the world's biggest democracy, and it has 22 official languages. And as most of you know, it has some of the world's best cuisine. However, India also has a lot of social problems. It is the third highest emitter of greenhouse gases in the world. There are 300 million people living in India whose homes do not have electricity. 300 million people. In the top 10 list of most polluted cities in the world, India has five and I was born in one of them, New Delhi, the capital of India. Just to put into perspective how densely populated this city is, it has 23 million people, and the size of the city is one-tenth the size of Sydney. So you've got the population of Australia in one-tenth the size of one of its major cities. I don't have many memories of my childhood in India, but well, what I do remember is I used to think we were rich. I only found out later in life that we weren't very rich at all. But I was always surrounded by family. I felt the love of my parents. And I remember living down the road from my grandparents, who I was very close to. I also vividly remember suffering from asthma and constantly going to the doctor to be treated, which makes a little sense, being one of the most polluted cities in the world. When I was eight years old, we moved to Port Moresby in Papua New Guinea. Now, this couldn't be a bigger contrast to India, the place that I was born. It has fresh air, wide open spaces, lush rainforest, beautiful ocean, one of the richest Melanesian cultures in the world. We didn't have cinemas, we didn't have shopping centers, what did we do for fun? We went fishing, we went hunting, we played tennis and squash. The things that you should do as a child. In 2013, I moved to the Cook Islands with my wife. The Cook Islands is this tiny little place in the middle of the South Pacific, and the population of the whole country is 15,000 people. It is one of the most beautiful places in the world. White sand beaches, crystal clear water, palm trees, what dreams are made of. I got married in Aitutaki in the Cook Islands, which in my opinion is the most beautiful place on earth. In 2015, I moved to Fiji and it is still my home. Again, another vibrant Melanesian culture. The world has a lot to learn from the Fijian people about their gratitude for life. It is a special place that also has beautiful islands and palm trees, and the most beautiful ocean. As a young adult, I used to travel back to India about once a year. And most of the time, it was, to, it was to visit my grandmother and grandfather. But what I do remember vividly is every time I used to go home, back to India, I used to enjoy it less and less. And at the time, I couldn't figure out why. Normally, you want to go back to where you're born and where you're from. It was only when I got older, I realized that I didn't enjoy going back, it was because every time I set foot outside of my door, all I saw was pain and suffering. Poverty is on a different level in India. It's not about not having enough money to go to the cinemas. It's about parents not being able to feed their children. 200 million people live under the poverty line in India. And I felt helpless. I was just one person. What could I do? I tried. I donated money to a school in the slums. I paid for a child's education. But that was just tiny drops in the ocean. 
So the only way I could deal with it is to block it out. I used to want to go out less and less when I was in India. When my grandmother passed away in 2017, that was the last time I visited India. And I have no intention to return. My life changed on the 5th of May, 2016. That was the day my son Taj was born. And four years later, my daughter Ivy was born. As most parents know, it changes your world. Having children filled a hole in my life that I didn't even know existed. You start to look at things differently. You've got a different perspective on life. You look at how do you invest in their education, in their future, how do you protect them from the world. And I also realized I could no longer just have those blinders on and say, I can't do anything. My greatest fear is that in my lifetime, the South Pacific, the oceans, the rivers, the land, will end up looking like what it's like in India. And what will happen to us then? We'll kill all the marine life. Tourism numbers will drop because Fiji is no longer that pristine, beautiful place. And those two being the two biggest industries, poverty will increase. People will struggle to make ends meet. This is a story I know very well. It was also around this time that I realized that in my career in the tourism and hotel industry, I had the power to be a force for good. I could help change. Tourism is the biggest employer in the South Pacific and also the biggest income earner. So I am what I like to call a sustainability champion. Now, I'm not the person who does all good. Um, I'm certainly not the one who does all the initiatives. But I am that person who's always nipping at the heels of management and owners and my colleagues, saying, what can we do more? How can we do better? How can we protect the environment? How can we divert some more money that we are earning towards the communities that we operate in? I've been blessed to work for some amazing companies during my time in the South Pacific. And I've been a part of a few extraordinary initiatives. We've banned plastic straws, banned plastic, single-use plastics, gotten rid of all those tiny bottles of shampoo and conditioner and bath soap and replaced them with bulk amenities. We've donated tens of thousands of dollars to Fiji Cancer Society. This is what every tourism business in the South Pacific should be doing. Imagine if there was a sustainability champion in every tourism business, in every department, in every family. What we don't want is our beautiful South Pacific to look like what we see in Asia, our beautiful ocean filled with trash. I had an extraordinary experience about a month ago. Um, I'm a scuba diver, and I was diving one day near where I live, and it was nine o'clock in the morning, and I was 20 meters under the ocean, surrounded by this deep blue, you know, all the soft corals of, of Fiji, bright colored fish. And as I looked into a cave, I saw a turtle looking straight at me. It had obviously been sleeping from the night before. But as soon as it saw me, it swam towards me and it turned away and swam away. And I remember in that moment thinking, wow, I am so lucky. I get to see this beauty face to face, 20 meters under the water. Fast forward eight hours, and I went for a walk on the beach with my family, my wife and two kids. And to my dismay, what had washed up on the beach was pieces of plastic absolutely everywhere. We picked up handfuls of plastic in a 50 to 100 meter stretch of beach. And when I realized that if that turtle had swallowed any of those pieces of plastic, it would be dead. I had this feeling of despair. Is this who we are as human beings? Maybe I am just that one person and I can't make any change. And then despair turned to hope. 
without being prompted, my six-year-old son walked over and started picking up rubbish with me. And as the two of us collected the trash and took it over to the bin, my three-year-old daughter said, good job, Daddy. And I felt hope that through education of our children, through leadership, through a sustainability champion in every tourism business, in every department, in every family, we can make change. Who is your sustainability champion? Mine are my children, Taj and Ivy. It only takes one person to make positive change. Those that are crazy enough to change the world are the ones that do. Thank you very much.